am Carb Brother. I'm Chris Nelson, president of Carbo. Really excited to finally have something for you. 2021, we've got the Springfield Hellcat Trigger Spring Kit. We had a spring kit ready to go for this platform when it came out. The reason it delayed, we had a nice trigger pull reduction, really got it in that sweet spot, four and a half pounds. The problem we experienced was the OEM plastic striker sleeve actually broke. So the more you try to push this trigger pull reduction, the more likely you're gonna have that striker sleeve actually break. The Achilles heel of this platform. Manufacturers, the big ones are going cheaper and cheaper to be price competitive. Internal parts that you may not typically see very often, at least when you're buying the pistol, they go cheap, kills me. So we've got a stainless steel striker sleeve replacement, fixes the problem. And we're able to go as light as we want on the trigger pull reduction. So a really nice feeling, smooth, clean trigger pull. Love it. We're a little late to the scene here, but I'm thankful that we at least took the time to make sure that the reliability gets improved. The trigger pull performance also gets improved. We made sure that it's 100% reliable, functional, drop test safe, hard primers, no problem. SMB ammo all day long, good to go. Really excited about it. The micro compacts are definitely a trend right now and they're definitely popular. And you know, it's a step up from a little pocket pistol and it's smaller than your typical compact. So, you know, a lot of the SIG P365s are crazy right now. I and mean, we've got a spring kit for that and it's done really well. Got one for the Hellcat. You're gonna see more if you guys want something for the Ruger Max 9. We're definitely interested in doing that as well. Let me quick the acting. Let's get on the tabletop, put this baby in. So you can see this is the unmodified factory. Just gonna run it, see how it feels. Give you guys a little up close. Price of ammo is so crazy these days. We gotta watch people shoot. Not bad. I mean, it's plastic, you know, it's, it's average. I wouldn't say it's completely terrible either. It's just personal preference. All right, so now we're gonna run the other one. That feels good. That feels really good. So just having, you know, at least a lighter trigger pull is always more conducive to making you feel more confident at a higher rate of fire. It's more top end speed, man. It's nice. Gonna make everybody perform naturally better with something that's more conducive to shooting better. All right, let's take this opportunity together. Check our firearms, make sure they're clear. Check the chamber, check the bolt face, check the magazine well. This one's good to go. All right, chamber bolt face, magazine well. All right, all clear. We did a nice little comparison test. You know, we've got one that's modified and one that's not. So this one is not modified. You can see by the little uh, plastic black striker sleeve there. This is the one we already modified with the lighter springs and the stainless steel striker sleeve. Let's see what kind of trigger pull we've got now after having shot it, after installing it. And this will give us a general idea of what we should get on this one right here when we're done. So I gotta use this gauge because the trigger well is a little bit smaller on these Hellcats than usual. Four pounds, 9.9 .9 ounces, not bad. Four pounds, 10.5 ounces. Four pounds, 0.2 ounces. Four pounds, 5.5 ounces. four pounds, 12.5 ounces. With this one that we've already done, we're getting about mid to high fours on a trigger pull. So there's 16 ounces in a pound, so that gives you a general idea where you're at. So not bad, not bad at all. All right, so we're done with this one, okay? We're gonna put it aside. All right, so this is the factory stock Hellcat. Let's see what kind of trigger pull we got. Seven pounds, 6.6 .6 ounces. That seems a little high. I definitely know what I'm seeing online is over six pounds. There's some reference to seven, but six pounds, 11.7 .7 ounces. Seven pounds, 15.7 .7 ounces. Six pounds, 11.7 .7 ounces. Seven pounds, 1.9 ounces. Six pounds, 10.7 .7 ounces. Seven pounds, 2.2 .2 ounces. Roughly high sixes, low sevens would be a decent starting point with the Hellcat. And that's consistent with what 
I've seen online, and this will definitely give us a, a decent reference point. But it's good to get a general average trigger pull. You know, do five pulls or ten pulls, total it up, divide by the number of pulls, and then I'll give you a good average and go from there and see what kind of percentage reduction. So that'd be a 33% reduction. So run by the percentages on the trigger pull reduction. That's going to give you a better reference, and that's what we're going to do here. So we're going to say that this is a six and three quarters, seven pound trigger pull to start with, and that'll give us some kind of reference on what sort of reduction we got. Parts needed for this build, Springfield Hellcat trigger spring kit with the 300 series stainless steel striker sleeve right here that'll replace the factory plastic OEM version. You got your lighter striker spring here, the big one, the lighter sear spring here, all right, this one with the tight little coils and the two hooks, and then the small little coil spring down here, this is your striker safety spring. So all three springs give you a nice even trigger pull reduction and enhanced reliability with the striker sleeve that's out of 300 series stainless steel. Tools needed for this build, hammer, bench block, 1 8 inch punch, 3 32nds inch punch, 1 16 inch punch, synthetic grease with PTFE, it's real helpful, micro tip flathead screwdriver, pair of needle nose pliers or any kind of small frame pliers will work. And this is optional, so if you want to do the polishing, and I'll point out all the areas that could use polishing and will help improve the trigger pull reduction slightly, but if you happen to get one out of the lot that's really gritty on the trigger pull, this is gonna help significantly. Any kind of rotary tool will be useful. You can get a Dremel, I highly recommend them, or you can get an $8 option at Harbor Freight, just looking for a rotary tool. And the polishing kit. Love the polishing kit that we offer. It's got three bullet-shaped felt bits to get in those tight places, great for the feed ramps and everything else. You've probably seen them in a ton of the other videos. Flitz polish, gloves, microfiber towel, you're covered. All right, let's get into it. All right, so we get started with a basic field strip. So you go ahead and lock slide back. All right, and then you got your takedown lever right here. Go ahead and push that up. Now you're gonna release the slide and you'll get to this point. Now, you know, this is always good habit. Just, you're gonna pull the trigger, but obviously never do it with your hand in front. Heard too many stories and actually seen a dude shoot himself in the hand. Just pretend it's loaded. All right, we're gonna pull the trigger. Okay, now we can remove that slide and we got them separated. So we got our slide, our frame, all right, give you a close-up look here of all the internals. All right, let's go ahead and jump into the slide real quick. So we just remove our recoil spring and guide rod right here. Our barrel, just push up on the barrel. Pops right out. Man, I know my hands are nasty, I can tell. I'm looking at them. I hear you. I always get a couple comments. That's a shout out for the, the hand critic. All right, so now we need to take the back plate off. There's your striker sleeve right there, that little square. We're gonna push down on that to relieve the pressure tension on the back plate. So I got my 3 seconds inch punch. I'm just gonna push down on that little bit of the striker sleeve there. And then that's gonna allow me to push that back plate down a little bit. All right, and once I've kind of got it this far, this is a good spot. All right, you can grab your little 1 inch punch, push down on the extractor plate. You don't have to push very far. It's just enough to kind of release some of that pressure. All right, and you'll see here in a minute when we look at the cutouts. And then just keep your finger over this striker sleeve. You know, kind of keep everything together to avoid it exploding on you. All right, there's the back plate. Set that aside. Immediately you'll notice on this extractor plate here, okay, there's a cutout. So when we go to put it back together, so that cutout's intended to slide into the back plate like this. That's what locks and keeps it all intact. So we can push our striker assembly out. So just push on your striker and pull it out. Okay, you can see your striker assembly there. Set that down for now. Here's your striker safety. So we need to remove that so that we can replace the striker safety spring. This is your extractor linkage here though. All right, so your extractor's right here. And if you're lucky, it's all still in one piece and you can see how it went together but I'll take this apart and show you just in case. I know it's useful, trust me, I've been there. All right, so the extractor, you can see it's got a little step right there, and then there's this little feature on this piece of the linkage for the extractor spring assembly where it'll locate over top just like that. You can easily turn and adjust this linkage on the spring however you need to, but the way we're gonna wanna have it set up when we put it back in is just like this, where this cutout is down and this little cutout for the back plates down and they'll all line up correctly. It can definitely be uh, a little crazy if it comes apart in pieces, so we can pull this apart real quick and take a good look at it. So this component is your extractor pin. All right, and you see how that 
went on the spring, just like that. And that's the first piece that would go in to locate on the extractor. You don't need to do this. If yours is together, save yourself the time. All right, this is the extractor spring pin, this little tiny guy here. And all of this is on the exploded parts view and you can access that on the website. Just go to the product page. Now you'll see there on this little extractor spring pin, you'll see this little feature here. There's two little cuts right around the diameter of this pin. That feature is gonna be pointing towards this little plate here. So this is the extractor spring plate, kind of like the back plate. So this is what locates and interacts with the back plate, holds it all together. And with the two circular cuts, it's gonna locate inside the spring like this. So this is the end that'll be touching that extractor spring back plate. And then you've got your extractor spring, and then you've got your extractor spring back plate. Put all this back together real quick. Extractor spring and extractor spring back plate on there. Now I've got my extractor spring pin. I'm gonna drop it back inside that spring and then take the extractor pin, this one here, and slide it back on that spring. That little nipple's gonna go inside, male, female in there. And what you'd wanna do is line up these little cut features so that they're both on the same side. So when we drop it in, it'll be simple and easy. All right, putting this over in my pile. All right, so we got the extractor linkage out of there. Extractor's still in there, and the striker safety's still in here as well. So the striker safety is what holds the extractor in place. All right, so we're gonna have to push down on the striker safety to release that extractor. So it's pretty simple, but if you skip this step, you're gonna be looking for that spring. All right, so push in on that striker safety, and now your extractor literally will just fall right out. So if you just tilt it over, it's gonna fall right out just like that. You can see it coming apart. See how it goes in there. And now slowly let up on that striker safety. And there you go. So you got your striker safety right here and the spring all together. There's your striker safety and factory striker safety spring. All right, so when you look at your slide, you'll see there's a little half circle right here and there's a flat back here. So that gives you the profile of the striker safety. It really tells you the orientation you're gonna to need to drop it in. So it's pretty simple to remember. There's really nothing to remember. It only goes in one way. So just like that, easy. So we'll put our factory striker safety spring in the bag once we open up the Mcarbo parts. And we also need to take apart our striker assembly so that we can replace that striker spring and sleeve. So we're gonna disassemble the striker assembly. It's the same in all the striker fired pistols, at least the majority. So what we'll do is we're gonna push down on this feature here. So put it in your bench block like this. You just want a hard surface to push against. We're gonna push down the striker spring far enough so that we can get our cups out. So these little two plastic cups, they're actually two separate pieces. All right, so we'll just push down on this feature get some clearance, and if you push down far enough, they'll just pop right out, but that's really it right there. And then the spring will come right up off the striker, and we can swap that out. And same with the striker sleeve here. It's pretty simple and straightforward. There's no way to really get it on there wrong. Well, it's not a challenge. <laughs> All right, and then there's the plastic retainers. So these little cups are the striker spring plastic retainers. They're not gonna take any sort of impact or take any sort of extreme pressure or tension, anything like that. But this striker sleeve definitely will. I mean, I said I was gonna break it on the video, so let's do a little, maybe it doesn't break. Maybe I'm just making it up. Whoop, it's a daisy. All right, let's go ahead and open up our spring kit with the 300 series striker sleeve. And if you wanna save the bag, good idea, put your stock springs in there. You can break your plastic striker sleeve if you want. You've got your lighter striker spring here. You've got your lighter sear spring and your lighter striker safety spring. And then our 300 series stainless steel striker sleeve. We literally shelved the spring kit project after hours broke during testing that striker sleeve, the plastic one. Direct replacement, just premium material over cheap little thin plastic that literally breaks. That's exactly where our other one broke. We at least needed to make one. So now we have enough for everyone, brought enough to share. You're gonna put your striker right through the striker sleeve, the stainless one. All right, and now we're gonna push down, same thing, we're gonna push down this feature on the striker, take our lighter striker spring and push down far enough to where we can get access 
right here. And then you're gonna drop your cups in. This is tough to give you a real good view. Let's see if I can get it just by holding it in my hand. You're literally just pushing down and dropping these little plastic retainers onto that thin little portion of the striker. And that's where they compress around and you know, lock up that striker spring on the assembly. So there you go. That would make me sleep better at night knowing I've got probably the most expensive piece of material in the gun now at this point, all right, compared to the cheapest possible option. Love the Hellcat, but definitely surprised when ours broke. I mean, that was never anything we immediately intended on replacing until it did. All right, so we've got the two lighter springs left here to replace. So this is where the synthetic grease with PTFE comes in handy. It's gonna work like gunsmith glue here. All right, so put a little bit on the end of that spring and it's gonna stick right where you want it on the underside here of the striker safety. Only one way to put it in, so we want that little circular feature towards the inside here. So we're gonna just drop it right in. You do need to make sure it's all lined up, you know, and it's helpful to look. Make sure your spring didn't jump out of that little pocket it's supposed to sit in. So we'll compress it, and you can use a punch. I'll use a punch so it's easier to see. Compress it enough until you can drop your extractor in. Your extractor is what's gonna lock it in place. Pretty easy to get your extractor. It only goes in one way. You've got that little feature down, okay? So just kinda pull it around like that, and it's gonna drop right in, and it's gonna lock in place. Striker safety is locked in place, under tension, moves freely up and down. You got your extractor over there, locked in place. Everything's going great. Take your striker with your 300 series striker sleeve. All right, slide it right in. This little feature of the striker pointing up. All right, you can see what we got going on back here too. Pretty straightforward. Now we need to put that extractor linkage back in. So here's the extractor linkage. So we got the extractor pin, the little cutout there, and this is the extractor plate, right? It locates with the back plate, extractor spring, and then there's a little guide inside we already went over. So we're gonna drop it right in like this. You can literally just do exactly what I'm about to do here. There's the hole it's going in. So I want that feature to slide over top of the extractor. And then you should have your extractor plate with that cutout facing towards where the back plate's gonna be sliding on here right this second. So you get your back plate in there, but we need to push down on the extractor first. So you can use your punch, 330 seconds, 1 8 inch punch, whatever you got. Push down, slide it on. Okay, you can take a little break here. You've got your striker captured. Grab your 1 16 inch punch, and you can make sure you got your plate lined up all perfect. All right, you want that little cutout to be ready for the back plate. Push down on the extractor plate. You may have to pull back a little bit on your back plate and then push your back plate right up. And it's gonna lock right in place just like that. Release, you're good to go. Make sure everything is holding in place. Excellent, all right, we're good to go. Now we can drop the barrel in just so we're ready when we're done here. And our recoil spring guide rod assembly. I'm just gonna push it right through and it locks right in on that little cutout on the barrel. Good to go. Now let's move on to the frame and install our lighter sear spring. All right, so let's take a close look at the frame before we start ripping it apart. You've got your disassembly lever here. All right, you've got your trigger pin here. You've got your locking block pin here. That's what holds your locking block in place, this whole piece here. You've got your slide stop and your slide stop spring. Just take notice with how it's sitting on top of that little piece on the slide stop. Those little things you just memorize, it'll be easy when we put it all together. And then your sear housings right here, this is your sear housing pin. So sear housing pin, locking block pin, trigger pin. Sear housing back here, this is your sear, and you can see the orientation that it's in currently. We're gonna replicate that. You've got your disconnector here and your disconnector spring. That's the one going left and right. And then you've got your sear spring right there. That's going front to back. 
And then this is your disconnector over here. So you can push on that, it's pretty stiff. See that, how the trigger reset? So it's always cool to kind of take a second and just familiarize yourself with the overall function. And this is your trigger bar here. And this little piece of the trigger bar is what's actually gonna hit the striker safety. So it's gonna engage with the striker safety. And that's how, it's pretty cool, all this stuff comes together. And then your ejector over here. So this one here, this is your magazine blocking lever. You'll see that better here in a second. That's the only weird piece that can trip you up a little bit. So we can start by taking all these pins out. There is, on this sear housing, there is a little tiny, it looks like a E-clip almost, but it's just a piece of a spring, and you'll see it better, it's a lock. So it locks this pin in place. So it's on this side, so it's on this you know, left side. So we're gonna tap all these pins out from left to right first, and then when we put them all back in, we're gonna go you know, from right over to left, just so we don't have to push this pin all the way through, and there's four little notches on it, and to hit that lock four times, it'd be easier just to bypass it once. So there is the sear housing pin. There's three notches. Now we're gonna take out our locking block pin right here. That's got two notches. And then our trigger pin right here, it's the biggest one. Biggest diameter pin, two notches. And now we've got our takedown lever. So this, you know, there's really no amazing secret on how to get it out. There is a spring that captures it right here. The opposite end of this uh, slide stop spring is what's gonna capture it and you'll see. So just kind of wiggle it and pull it out, just like that. Okay, takedown lever. So right now we're ready to pull all this stuff out. Real simple and easy. Pull up on your locking block. There it is. This is your slide stop spring and the orientation that it's in. There's a little piece of it that locates into the locking block like this. So you can see that little bend, that leg right there, it locates in that little hole. All right, now you can see your magazine blocking lever here and that's it just sits in there. So now let's pull up on our slide stop. Set that aside. So you can just push up on the trigger and then just push forward on the sear housing. There's just two little tabs right there that locate into the back of this polymer frame here. So there's your trigger and sear housing all together. And I'll show you a second here. We're gonna pull that apart. And then your magazine blocking lever literally just sits in like that, nothing special. So let's lay it all out, I'll review it, and we'll take the rest of the sear housing apart. All right, so here's all the pieces we just took out of the frame. So you got your takedown lever here, your locking block here, with your slide stop spring, your magazine blocking lever, your slide stop right here. You got your trigger pin here, that's the big one, biggest diameter. And then you've got your locking block pin right here, it's the one with the two little notches there. And then you've got your sear housing pin here. It's got the three notches there. And then we've got our trigger, our trigger bar, and the sear housing itself. And we're gonna focus on that right now. Let's clear all this out. All right, so this can look intimidating, but it's really not. Something to point out, when we put our spring back on, our sear spring, you'll notice you're gonna have that little open end of the hook right there facing down. And then the opposite end will be up here. You can barely see it, but there's an open end right there. It'll make sense here in a second. Disconnector right here, all right, your sear. So to get this trigger bar out, it's real simple. Just hold on to your sear housing, trigger bar, pull forward all the way, and then just pull straight up. So it locates in there, you can see there's a T, and you'll notice on that sear, let me get that sear back in position. There you go, so you can see how that goes in, that's why we pull it forward and out, easy. Your sear comes out, the way it goes together, pretty simple. It's kind of all hanging together here now. You got a pin that the other end of the sear spring locates on. So there's a big diameter head right here on this right side. And then on the opposite side, you can just push it straight out. There is a notch on that pin that that sear spring snaps into. So that might give you a little resistance, but it's a good way to make sure everything's locked in place, we wouldn't want that sear spring 
coming undone. So that's the sear spring pin there. All right, so this is what I was trying to point out. When it's in the housing, your trigger bar is gonna locate right into it like that. And that's all we need to do with the sear housing. This is that little clip right there that I mentioned as we were taking the frame apart. So when it's all in the frame like this, you can see that little clip, it's on the left side. So just to avoid having to deal with that pin, you know, locking on each individual notch, that's why we went left to right. Per sear housing aside for a minute. You can polish up your sear. If you want, grab your polishing kit. We can start polishing up a lot of this stuff. You know, it'd be your sear. You can see all that wear right there. That's where it's rubbing. So if you smooth that out, you know, if it feels pretty gritty, polish it up. You don't need to sand anything. I mean, this is all pretty good anyway from the factory. I'm really surprised and impressed. The trigger bar, you know, you can polish up this portion right here on the back. That'll definitely help because that's what's gonna be engaging with your disconnector right here. So as this is moving back and forth, potentially you can get some burr, some wear, especially if you've got a lot of rounds through your pistol. So you can polish up this back portion here you know, if you want to polish this little portion too, you could. And this portion here is what's engaging with your safety on your slide. So your striker safety right here. So your trigger's in the frame. You know, we're just kind of visioning this. This is how your trigger bar is engaging with that striker safety right here. So you could polish up the tip here, all right, this engagement area on the trigger bar. You could also polish up your striker safety as well. The idea is all metal, metal contact surfaces you want them to be smooth, burr-free. A few good spots on the trigger bar that you can polish up. Here, here, optionally, the piece that goes in the sear. Polish up top portion, this edge up front of the sear. You know, polishing's not gonna remove any real amount of material that'll be noticeable. You don't wanna sand, don't do anything like that. Just polishing up, removing burrs. Now this face of the disconnector here would be worth polishing as well. That's gonna help smooth it up if you have any grittiness, if it's something that bothers you. I'm not gonna do it, but I you know, at least showed you where to polish. Just grab your flitz polish, polishing bits, a Dremel, rotary tool, anything will work, and this will do it up real quick, 15, 20 minutes. All right, so we're getting ready to swap out this heavier factory OEM sear spring. Let's flip the sear over, just so it's not confusing. We got everything lined up the way it should be. You can kind of get a general idea. Here's the frame, all right? So the sear housing is gonna go back in the frame here. You got your ejector pointing forward towards the tip of the barrel. And then your trigger bar is gonna be dropping into the sear housing on this side here and interacting with the disconnector right here. We got these two cutouts you can see on this side of the sear. So that tells us naturally which way the sear is gonna be oriented. It kind of helps if you can pay attention to those little subtle details, makes it a lot less confusing as you're doing this. That's exactly what I try to do for myself because it's so easy to get turned around here. You know, it'd be super simple to mistakenly put that spring on the wrong way. We're gonna swap out this spring. We're gonna do the exact same orientation. As long as we have it in the correct orientation, we'll be good. So this is our lighter sear spring, and it's a little easier to see here. So you can see this little cutout here on the sear spring. It's gonna be facing the same direction. So we're gonna, have, we're gonna hook it like this. I know I'm beating this horse to death, but it can easily get mixed up. So let's do it together. And your OEM factory one's gonna be a little stiff to get out. And that's how you can get turned around pretty quickly when you're doing this swap, because you're gonna be focused on trying to pop this little guy out. All right, put the OEM spring back in the bag where you got it. So just like we were looking at it, we're gonna have this break in the loop forward like this, just like that. And that's gonna ensure when it's inside the assembly and it's around that pin that this loop is on the underside like this. So it'll be under tension, it's gonna be captured. So there's no concern of it popping off. It's just, you wanna make sure you know, this is in the right configuration because if this was not, potentially you could have it pop off. So you wanna make sure this little break, you know, it's on the underside here of the sear, not flipped 180 degrees facing the top. All right, simple enough. So now we're gonna put in the sear. We're gonna put it right inside the housing, slide it right in. A nice little trick is to use your trigger bar now in this process. So 
that feature, that little cross feature of the trigger bar, it's gonna drop right in to the sear on the side with this engagement feature. So this is a disconnector engagement feature, interacts with this portion of the trigger bar, it all drops in together, locates nicely, kind of makes sense. I try to explain in you know, ridiculous detail, at least this function aspect, because it's gonna help you understand as you're putting it together and kind of check your progress as you go. All right, this little pin, it's gonna hold the actual sear spring in place, keep it under tension in the housing. It's got a little notch there and it's got a head on it too. So you notice there's a wider head here, a little notch in the center. That's where the spring needs to locate and hold itself in place, keep proper alignment of the spring. So you'll notice from this working side we've been operating on, it's got a bigger hole, so that's convenient. We're gonna drop that pin right in. I'm gonna turn it up this way so you can see. Push that pin out a little bit. And then theoretically you just be able to easily grab that spring and get it on that pin. It should take two seconds. There is a trick if you've got this bench block, tap in a punch like this and you can kind of use it as a third set of hands. I would definitely do that. Since I'm trying to demonstrate and show every little detail, I'm gonna do it the harder way. I'm gonna pull the spring back with my punch from inside the hole on the opposite side, and I'm gonna push the pin through. Grab my micro tip, use that to guide it along. All right, not bad. Once you got the pin and the spring mostly in place, you can use that micro tip to kind of move it around. The key here is to not bend your spring, and that would be the easiest thing to do, and that would cause problems. You know, you'd, you'd experience some issues, and it would be confusing why you're having issues, but springs can easily be damaged. All right, so you can see what I'm doing. I'm gonna do the method I wanna do, which is the one I recommend. Definitely like having a third set of hands here. I can grab the spring with that little 1 inch punch and I can keep the housing sitting right there like that. Drop my pin right in. Get it all lined up. So I'm pushing the sear housing up off of the punch that's holding the sear spring in place. And I've got my pin right there like that, ready to take the hand over. And so as I continue to move the housing off, my pin's ready to capture it just like that. And then take your micro tip and kind of use that to assist the remaining portion and pop it on in place like so. Much easier that way to kind of give yourself a little third set of hands by you know, using the bench block as a base. And then you're just trying to move that pin into place and push it right up in there. But it's under some tension, so it can be slightly challenging. Just trying to get it in the hole. <laughs> Easier for some. Now we just move that spring into that little notch right there on the pin, right? Boom, all set. And there's our opening pointing down, right? There's the sear, the opening's down. Got it, check. So that's you know, replacing the sear spring. Not too bad. Most important is getting the orientation right. If you were gonna replace the trigger, you just tap out this pin and put the new trigger in. Simple as that. If you guys want us to make a trigger, recommend it. I'm ready. I want to. Just wanna hear you guys say it. All right, so I'm gonna lay everything out that needs to go back in the frame, talk about it one more time, and put it together. All right, guys, so this is everything that you've got in front of you right now to put back into your frame. So we've got our locking block here with our slide stop spring. You can see the orientation it's all in. We've got our takedown lever here, got our slide stop, our magazine blocking lever. All right, that's important, easy one to miss. Trigger, trigger bar, sear housing. We've got our sear back in there, sear spring. The little cutout on the sear spring is facing down, at least on this lower portion here where it locates on the sear. This is your sear housing pin safety right here. So it's just a little tiny half coil, three quarter coil of a spring. You know, it locks into the notches on the pin. All right, so just make sure it's in there. If it fell out, just put it back in, use a little grease, synthetic grease, hold it in place, it'll be just fine. Then you've got your three pins here, largest diameter pin with two little notches. This is your trigger pin. Then you've got another pin that's a smaller diameter with two notches. 
that's gonna be your locking block pin. And then you've got your sear housing pin. It's got three notches, all right? And that's gonna hold the sear housing in place. All right, so we got our frame. This is the side we're gonna work from here. You know, slide stop, all the features we need to access. Take your magazine blocking lever first. It's so easy to overlook and forget. Let's just get this out of the way. You'll see right here, there's a notch on this right side. Just drop that baby right in. And it's gonna line up here in a second real easily. Just hold it right in place. Don't let it fall out. There are two little notches in the back of the frame. Here's the two little tabs on the sear housing that's gonna receive those notches. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna drop in our sear housing. You wanna get your trigger in the hole first. Just kinda hold it tilted down, drop our trigger into the hole. The sear housing is gonna go into the frame. And I'm going super slow here, give you a good idea. It's, it's not that hard. I mean, it's gonna wanna naturally seat itself anyway. So if you can get it to push down, good. You know, if you're at this point, you just need to push it back. So down and back and get it to lock in place on the frame back here. Should be nice and flush back here. Your holes should be lining up or mostly lined up. And that's always a good indicator of what you need to do next. But at least our magazine blocking lever is captured at this point. You don't have to worry about it falling out. That's good. So now you can really press nice and hard on that sear housing and make sure your holes line up. Remember, we've got that little sear housing pin safety, that little half clipping of a coil, a spring on this side. So we're gonna grab that pin that's got those three little notches and we're gonna insert it on the right side here. And it should be able to just do it by hand most of the way until you get to that little safety and then we'll tap it. We just don't wanna have to push or get a punch and hammer and smash it through the safety three times, wearing it out effectively. All right, now we're gonna drop in the locking block. All right, you can see this is your slide stop spring right here, the orientation and configuration it's in. Any of this stuff starts falling out on you, you can use a little synthetic grease. Just put it on the side of the back side of this spring, a little here, and it'll stick in place. I mean, it's gunsmith glue. For reassembly, it's great. There's a notch here, a cutout, and a notch here on the frame. That's where these lugs right here, here and here, those are gonna locate inside the frame, hold your locking block in place. All right, so this little magazine blocking lever is gonna stay up against the frame, out of the way, hopefully. That's where we wanna keep it, is up against the frame. So we're gonna drop in our locking block. You can see I've got these little tabs lined up, kinda of holding my spring in place because I didn't use any grease, should have, but I'm hoping I can do it. But that's where we all go wrong. Don't, don't get too ahead of ourselves here. All right, make sure that little magazine blocking lever is staying out of the way. Might help to use your punch and push it up against the side of the frame and then push down on the locking block at the same time. But if you're meeting resistance, it's likely that little magazine blocking lever there. So you wanna make sure if it's pushed out like this, push that baby all the way in and your locking block will drop right in. Simple stuff, but can always be extension to the uh, time frame, right, for the reassembly. So here is the slide stop. We're gonna drop it right in. We wanna make sure that spring locates on the top here. You see a nice little wear mark, good indicator that's where it once was. You know, all this stuff is helpful, reassurance. So we're just sliding it in. You know, it's just blind and it's, it's gonna line up because we're gonna check it right here on this hole where the trigger pin is gonna go. So that's how we'll make sure it's in place. There's nothing in there to interfere or cause issues. So we don't need to like put that in first. It's easier to just to pop it in place like this now once we've got the major components in already. And now we line up our holes. Slide stop can move a little bit. So we'll line up our holes and we can start putting the rest of these pins in. So here's a little locking block pin. You can see it's got two little notches there. Check your hole first, make sure you got clearance all the way through, or most of the way. Start it by hand on this right side here. Push it as far as you can. You may be able to push it all the way through. Easy. Same with our trigger pin. We're gonna look through the hole, see if we got clearance. 
lined up that hole on the slide stop, and check it again over here. Take my pin, it's a larger one, larger diameter pin, push it through, push down on this locking block a little bit, getting a little resistance. So I can use my bench block, push down, I can take a punch and just kind of run it in that hole, move it in a circular fashion, make sure everything's lining up. You know, it's always just something simple. And then just push down on the bench block. At least during the alignment part, it's, it's definitely more helpful. Use your punch, make sure everything's lining up and just kind of use some pressure to push those pins through before you go straight to the hammer and punch. But if you've never taken it apart, pins are gonna be tight anyway, so you're likely gonna have to use that hammer and punch, so don't be too concerned. You know, a little plastic tip on the hammer, helpful, because I can just, one little hit, I don't have to worry about damaging the frame. It's nice, nice and flush, all right? All of our pins are in place, looking good. Nice little positive win so far. So here is our takedown lever, and you'll notice you've got these little cutouts here. That's for the spring to engage and locate this portion of the spring that was on the locking block. So you can see this little portion is sticking into that hole a little bit. That's what's gonna hold it. On this end, there's a cutout like this. That's useful to get around that spring as you're putting in your takedown lever. It'll allow you to get that pin at least started into the hole. And then from there, it's just gonna take a little pressure as you rotate it and it'll pop right in. And then line it up on the other side. Lining it up on the other side probably takes the most amount of time. Once it's lined up, you can just push it straight in and you'll hear it snap against that spring. And there's no concern here with really getting it in the wrong way. And this is normal right now. We don't have any tension on this takedown lever, so it's gonna be a little flimsy. So everything's back together. You can check your slide stop, make sure that's under good tension, right? Your spring's located right there on top. We got everything in the proper configuration. We got our sear in there correctly. You know, the highest side of the sear is right here. The lowest is down here. Striker is gonna be held by this edge of the sear. We've got our disconnector spring. We've got our sear spring down in there. All right, so our trigger's already back. Sear is down. So we're just gonna check the disconnector function real quick. We're just gonna push in on the disconnector and we should see the sear move up. See that? All right, so you just wanna make sure that will happen. And then if you pull forward on your trigger, it moves everything forward. You can pull your trigger. You can see it all move backward. And you hit your disconnector and it's gonna reset the height of that sear. There we go. Let's go ahead and make sure we have the trigger back. You don't want it staged forward like this. Just make it a little easier if your trigger's back. And let's put the slide back on. Put your takedown lever in the up position like this and line up notches on the slide with these lugs on the locking block. Your ejector needs to get in the hole, get it in the hole. And now we're gonna push the slide all the way back, push up on the slide stop, lock it in place, drop our takedown lever forward. And we can do a quick little function check. Ooh. Nice, clean, smooth, beautiful. All right, so you can see I'm holding the trigger back because I'm testing the reset. Really nice, crisp reset. Reset's right there, so you can pull right there. You don't need to let it continue going all the way the heck back out there. That's something that could be resolved with a better trigger too. Let me know what you guys want to do. If you guys want a trigger, we'll make one. Continue to bother customer service and anybody you talk to like, hey, Hellcat trigger, we'll get it done. All right, guys, that feels great. Let's go ahead and measure our after modification trigger pull, see what we got. All right, let's go ahead and see what we get for a modified trigger pull reduction. Take a few good readings here, try to get an average. Three pounds, 13.7 ounces. I mean, let's get an average here. That seems a little lighter than I expected. Okay, four pounds, 5.6 ounces. 
That's more along the lines of what I'm expecting. Four pounds, 1.7 ounces. Four pounds, 5.1 ounces. But everybody's gonna get slightly different results. Three pounds, 15.7 ounces. Four pounds, 14.6 ounces. Four pounds, 15.5 ounces. Four pounds, 12.1 ounces. Four pounds, 5.2 ounces. So I'm feeling pretty confident here with all these readings, extremely low four to upwards at most at four and three quarters. So we can call it four and a half pounds on average. You know, this is never a hundred percent, you know, precise science. There's always a little variation in each pull. You know, having a flat trigger with some pre-travel adjustment will also help make that feel lighter as well because you're not gonna have that massive amount of reset. We could get it to where it's right there and you're back again. So all those little factors are gonna help, but we made a huge reduction in pull weight depending on where you're starting. You know, where we started here was high sixes, low sevens, down to four and a half. That's fantastic. So do the math, you can get a percentage. So even if we go with the lowest starting trigger pull weight, six and three quarters, and we stick with our four and a half average, there's a two and a quarter pound drop there. So that percentage drop is 33%. So 33% trigger pull reduction. We dropped it two and a quarter pounds. That's nice. But it's all dependent on what you start at. You know, if your initial readings, you're starting at five and you drop it to two, I mean, it could be the method, the way you're doing it, but it comes back to percentage. If it's in line with that 33%, excellent. It's also, you know, you can shoot a little bit, let it break in, brand new springs, yada, yada, yada. You can also do some polishing as well. You know, brand new guns, there's gonna be a little bit of a wear in period. You put like 10,000 rounds through a gun, obviously you're gonna have a lot of wear on all the components, but all those little aspects that we pointed out for the polishing that you could do, you know, those features will wear smooth out, but you can just polish it and get ahead of that and not have to blow 10,000 rounds, which is a lot of money right now. All right, I'm eager to hear what you guys think about this. Well, there you have it, guys. 33% trigger pull reduction. We dropped two and a quarter pounds on this particular Hellcat. Love it. You know, results can vary a little bit. You're not gonna get the exact same trigger pull reading every pull. So I hope I illustrated that. You get an average, see what you started with first, see what you ended up with afterward. A lot of it too is in the feel, how it feels when you're shooting, not necessarily just what number did I get? You're gonna notice a significant feeling, improvement, very noticeable difference on that pull. It's not gonna be as heavy. I didn't find it too gritty to start with, but if you do the polishing, that's gonna be an improvement, it always is. If you want a better trigger, we can certainly do something with this to make it better. Plastic triggers are plastic triggers. I mean, it's, we can make something better, a flat trigger, aluminum, and give you a little safety blade that's aluminum as well, not an aluminum trigger with a plastic safety blade. Excited to do more for the Hellcat, excited to do more for a lot of these micro compacts that are out and definitely see the value. I mean, great little shooter, gun prices and ammo are crazy right now, but for what you're paying for it, it seems like a pretty good value. So I do, I do like the Hellcat. Excited to do more. Thank you guys for your ideas, your support, and let us know if we should do anything else for it. Excited to hear that. Thank you, Carver Brotherhood, as always. Thank you for your support, appreciate it. And as always, happy shooting.